In this video, I'm gonna show you how to make your very own guitar loops using GarageBand on your iPhone or iPad. So, let's go. Hi, my name is Pete and welcome to Studio Live today where my goal is to help you create, record and release your best music. And this is something that's gonna be a lot of fun because did you know you can create your own loops, samples and other sounds using GarageBand, export them and then share them to use in other projects. You can give them to other people, you can sell them on the internet, you can use them in your future projects. It's super fun and I'm gonna show you how to do it right now. Now there's quite a bit to go through in this one. So there's some timestamps down in the description if you wanna to jump to a particular section but what we're going to do is I've got my guitar connected to my iPad running GarageBand. I'm going to record in some sounds and then I'm going to export them as loops. I'm going to show you how to do all of that in this tutorial and hang around till the end because I've got a little present for you. I'm going to give you the ability to download these loops and use them in your own project so hang around for that but for now let's jump in and get started. Now the first thing you need to do is connect your guitar to your iPad or iPhone using an audio interface or an iRig or another device. Now I'm not gonna show you in detail here because I've got a complete video which will be linked at the end of this one and down in the description, you can check that out. Not a guitar player, no problem. This works just as well for any other instrument including the virtual instruments we have here in GarageBand and I'm going to show you that as well. So if you're not a guitar player, don't worry, we got you covered. So my guitar is plugged in using my Steinberg UR22C audio interface and I'm ready to record here. So I've come into GarageBand and I'm gonna use the built-in amps. You can use any plugins or anything else you like, but I'm gonna tap on more sounds here and I've gone distorted and power chord because we're gonna rock out to start with in this one. So I'm gonna use the power chord preset here. Now what you'll need to do is to make sure that your guitar is hooked up correctly is tap on this one here, the little plug icon. Now mine's coming through the second channel. So I'm gonna tap that one and go input two, and that's gonna to go to the input on my Steinberg UR22 interface. And then the final thing I need to do is turn on the monitoring. So be very careful, make sure that your guitar is at the right level, that you're not gonna blow your ears off or damage your equipment and tap on monitor. And then if I've done everything correctly, if I play a chord here, we should have some rock and roll guitar ready to go. So that's all we need to do to get set up. Now we need to decide the speed of our loop. Now this is super important because we can adjust the speed outside of GarageBand and you can sort of do some changes to pitch and speed. But my recommendation is to create the loop in the speed that you will want folks to use it or yourself to use it in the future so that uh, everything is gonna be hunky-dory. So we're gonna tap on the settings icon here in the top right, come down to tempo. Now because it's rock, let's bump it up a little bit. Let's go 124. It's one of my favorite tempos. So now if we hit the play button here, there's our tempo. That's a rockin' kind of tempo if you ask me. Now, I don't know about you, but I don't rock out to that kind of beat. I want some drums to actually play my guitar loop too. So I'm gonna tap the plus button here. I'm gonna slide on across. No, not do that. I'm gonna try again. We'll come back to our instrument selector. I'm gonna slide across here and go to drummer because we wanna add in some drums here. I'm gonna tap more drummers. And because it's rock, we need Anders, our hard rock drummer. Now I don't want a particularly complex beat, so I'm just gonna lower this down here, nice and loud, but pretty simple. And let's see what Anders gives us out of the box here. Maybe not, let's try the Black Veil. I like that one, because I kinda wanna do a bit of a rock riff here for my loop that's gonna be, whoop, I'm not on my guitar. Here's the thing, you need to actually be on the actual guitar here before we can. So that's the sort of riff that I wanna play here and record in because it's the kind of thing it's hard to get. If you don't have a guitar, you can't get a cool rock riff like this happening. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna hit record on this one. It's gonna count me in and then I'm gonna play. I'll play it up here on G actually, cause G's a better key if people wanna use this one to jam along. So let's hit record. I'm gonna record in, do my first take of my loop and we'll see what it sounds like. All right, 
we'll hit stop there. I probably should have given myself a little lead in before I started playing, but that's okay. It might be salvageable. So we'll bring this back here because we want these one, two, three, four bars of our first bit here. Now let's play this back and see how in time Pete's guitar playing was here. Not too bad. And in fact, you can hear me just starting to play that next bit here. So we'll see how this goes. Now to test this as a loop, I did four bars. What I can do is tap on this one. I hit settings and then I hit the looping button. And look what happens. It now makes my sound go all the way through. So now if we play this one back, we can see whether it's going to work as a loop because it should sound pretty seamless when we play it. Let's test it out. Not bad, yeah? Pretty good. Uh, should we try another another take of this? Let's just give it another go. We'll duplicate. We'll duplicate out that track. That's going to give us the exact same settings here. We can now mute that one. We can now bring this one on, turn that one off, and we should have everything back again there. I've dropped my pick, so let me pick my pick up. Now, what I thought I would do here is let's just do this little action, is if we create a little bit of blank space in the front here, it's gonna make it easy for us, easier for us to play this in. So let's do that now. So all I need to do is tap the plus button here in the top right. I'm gonna add a new section and here it is. It's added eight bars automatic. I'm just gonna go edit there. And I'm going to bring this to the front here uh, and hit done. I don't even really need eight bars. So let's hit on the eye icon there. Let's drop it all the way down to two bars, shall we? And come back to there. And there you can see we're just going to have two bars at the front. Now, if we want to make sure that we're displaying all these, we tap the plus there. We hit all sections. Now we can see our two bars at the front there. And then our eight bars that we're going to record our loop in. All sections, we're good to go. This just gives us two bars to count in before we have to start playing. Can make it easier if you're trying to record yourself a loop. I'm going to grab my pick and let's try another take. Two, two, ready, go. There we go. Pause that one. So now all we need to do is just drag this over to the front like that, drag this one over to the back like that, and do our same looping trick. Tap it. We can even just tap the loop button right here. You don't even need to go to settings. You can just loop it. And now let's try this. Again, we've got that first one muted. We're just going to try this with this second one here. Oop, it unmuted. There we go. Come back to our track view and record this. Now, this works on iPhone or iPad. I've just got the iPad Pro here. If you've got a smaller iPhone, no worries. You can still do exactly the same thing with the same set up. Let's hit play. Oh, you know what I did? Uh, I, I put the loop spot in the wrong spot. So that's okay. We can come back here. We can tap that. We can just drag this back to there because I played that extra bar there. So that's okay. We can loop it again. I did that on purpose to show you what not to do. Let's just check this transition again, shall we? I like that. It, and you can tell there that the difference between this and using a virtual guitar, if you use this loop in a project, it's going to sound a lot more realistic, isn't it? So when at the end I show you how you can download this loop, you can then bring it in. And as long as your project is at a 124 BPM and you want a G. In fact, you know what we're going to do? Let's create some additional loops here. Let's, uh, let's, let's use this same pattern, but give you a... Yeah, let's give you a different one. So what we'll do, we'll just mute that one out there and we'll play it up on the next chord here. Again, we'll duplicate this. Should be naming these as I go along, but oh well. Uh, we'll put that there. We'll go back to the start and let's play this one in as our C chord now. Yeah, it's a C chord. <laughs> <laughs> got to get my C chords right, C's and D's. So we'll do G, C and D. So we've got one of each of these and then we can export these out. And you can use these in a track that's not just in, you know, one note. You can, can be in the whole major key. So let's hit record again. Get our count in. Two, two, three.
a little bit of an artifact there, but that's okay. That's rock and roll, right? So we'll bring that back there. We'll bring that back there to make sure it's one, two, three, four this time. And we'll loop it out again. It's not going to sound good because, uh, yeah, you know what I mean. Uh, all right. And now let's just do a D, a D version of this. We'll duplicate it out. So we've got G, we've got C, and now we're going to mute this one. We're going to bring this one as that. And let's record us a D chord. And then we'll, uh, we'll show you how we export these as a loop. Oakley doakley. Again, we cut off the front. We cut off the back, we loop the sucker, and there you go. We've got ourselves some loops. Now, before we do the final step, which is showing you how to export and then bring these back in, how about we do some lead guitar? Because uh, nothing says rock and roll like a bit of lead guitar. So what I'll do is we'll mute out these two, we'll bring back our G chord there, and let's just do a little lead riff over the top, shall we? So we're going to find another guitar amp. I might choose my favorite of the guitar amps here, which is definitely the Dublin Delay. Now, is it under crunchy or is it under clean? Where are you, Dublin Delay? Maybe it's a process. There it is. Dublin Delay. This one sounds cool. Let's uh, play it. Let's set up our guitar, shall we, first? We need to come back in here. We don't have it on input two. Input two, we're good and then monitor. Now we should be able to get... There you go. So we've got our Dublin delay ready to rock and roll. it definitely didn't take me five more takes to get that sounding okay we're good to go here now so what we've got here is we've got in fact we'll remove the first version we did of that one because we did it again so now we've got three different loops here the three different power chords we did the g the c and the d we've then got a lead part here and we can now export all of these individually as loops so let's show you how we can do that and then bring them back into a project and use them again so a little bit of maintenance to start with. We want to get rid of this first section. We don't need that anymore. So we're going to tap on the plus there. We'll go to edit. Goodbye. Thank you, section B. You've served us well, but we don't need you. There you go. Now we've got these nice eight bars. So we're going to do an eight bar loop. Once again, we can check our tempo here. It's at 124 BPM. That's important because when you name your file, you want to make sure you call it that as well. What we need to do from here is make sure we've only got one of these soloed. So this is the one that's going to create our first loop. If we hit play... <laughs> There is our guitar sounds, and then it's going to loop through and do that whole lot. Now, we can make it four bars or eight bars. Because it's a repeating loop, we can actually make it just four bars. So, in fact, I'm going to do something else here. I'm going to come in, and just to make this even simpler, because these are repeating, we're going to come to our section length. We're going to make it four bars, and then go back, and there you go. It's going to cut off the rest of that. Because all these were just doubled up anyway, we can save some space and some effort by doing it as four bars. So that is all good. What we now need to do is exit out of here. So hit on our little uh, saving icon there. Instead of my song three, let's tap on this and give it a name. Guitar loops in G should do it. There you go. It has put that, oh, it's reordered it. There you go. There it is. So it's good to go. Now what we can do is we can tap the select button and we can tap on this one. And then down in the bottom left, we can share it. We're going to tap share. We're going to share the song file because what we want to do is make this an uncompressed WAV file. 44.1 kilohertz, 24 bit, a high quality WAV file that we can then bring in and use in future projects. So I'm going to tap the share button in the top right corner. That's going to go away and ask me this. Now, I want to tap open in first. There's a bit of a bug in here at the moment where we can't go straight to save. We have to do open in first. It's going to go and export that song. Now, remember, it's only exporting those four bars of that one track because we had it soloed. So here it goes. We'll wait for this to export, and then I'll come back and show you what to do next. There you go. That's done. We're going to now tap on save to files like this. And it's going to bring up our files locations here. And in just a moment, I've got a lot of files, so it takes a moment. It'll show us the different locations, and we can choose where to save this loop. And in fact, it has defaulted here to the GarageBand file transfer under GarageBand iOS. So I'm going to tap on save there, and that's going to put that straight in my GarageBand file transfer folder ready for me to bring back in. So I'm going to show you how we can bring that into the project. I can do the others using the exact same method, but just in case you wanted to see a bit of that, if we tap back here on our project, all we need to do to export each other loop is to actually do the solo trick again. So in fact, let's just do this for the lead part. 
So we'll tap there on the lead part. Now we've soloed that one. We're gonna go back out here to our track here. Now, here's where I'd suggest you start renaming this project before you release it. So if we make this one guitar loop lead, then we'll be good to go. We can hit enter. And now when we export it, it's going to use that. So I'm going to hit this one. I'm going to do that same process again with the share, and then we'll come back and show you what we need to do next to bring these back into a project. So those two files are now exported and we're ready to go. I did say that I would show you that this isn't just for guitar players. So you can use this exact same method. Say you came in here and you wanted to grab drums or strings or bass or guitar or keys. You can use this same method to create a loop. So if I came in here and I tapped on the keyboard, I could create a loop with, with a synth like this and just like be playing along, record that and turn that into... So it doesn't matter what you're using, whatever you can record in here, solo it, export it, bring it back in as a loop. You can create, and you don't have to do one track at a time. You can mix up, you can create your own beats using this exact same process and then have those ready to go to bring back in. I just like doing it one at a time so that people can bring the loops in and then change it up and use different things. So keep that in mind. If you're not a guitarist and you want to use it with other instruments, you can of course do that. Now, before we bring these back into GarageBand, what I like to do is make sure I rename my loops in the Files app. So we'll jump across to Files here, and then we'll come in here to GarageBand. We'll go into GarageBand File Transfer, and come on down, and here they are. Now, there's two versions of them. It, again, it's around that bug with the Save to Files at the moment, but don't worry, we can just delete one of these. But what I want to do is tap and hold on this one here, and then this is going to pop up. We're going to rename it down here, and we'll call this one, it is the, the, the lead, lead, lead loop, we'll call it Guitar Loop 124 BPM, and then we'll put Lead. So that's just going to make sure that I know exactly what this one is, and then we can grab this one here, not play it, but tap and hold it, same thing, hit rename over here, oh, I'm finding it, there we go, and then we'll do the same thing here, we'll go Guitar Loop, and this is a G chord, 124 BPM. And that just means that we have those in, and I've, I've realized I've used a completely different thing. I've put them around the other way. Decide on one, don't do what I do, do what you do. But now we at least know that these two loops are going to be the right thing. In fact, while we're here, if we hit play, there you go, there is our loop. And you can use this, you can send this to someone, you can upload it to Google Drive or Dropbox or wherever you like, which is what I'll be doing at the end of this one. And you can of course use it in your project. So let's finish off by showing how we can bring these loops back into a project and use them in GarageBand. So we're back in GarageBand, we're gonna to go to a new song here. And we can just choose whatever we want here. We'll go into keyboard, just so that we can go to our track view. So we'll tap on track view in the top left. And now we've got all these nice little new blue things under here under our loops. If we tap on that one, now we can scroll on down and we should be able to find all the great naming conventions Pete used. We've got the G chord and we've got the lead there. Now, before we bring these in, Again, make sure that we're in the right speed. So if you are gonna use these and bring them into your project, tap on the icon there, tap on the tempo, and tick that all the way up to 124. And now, this is gonna be ready to go. We can bring in these loops. So we'll go to the loop icon there, and all we need to do, let's bring in the G chord, drag it on in, put it onto a new track, there it is. And it, it is gonna normalize these, so it's gonna make them louder. So you are gonna to need to be very careful to turn them down, because when you export a file in GarageBand, it does make it super loud. Let's just play this one back. Could have done better timing, but perfection. Let's not chase it. Now let's bring in the lead riff. We can do the same thing. Just drag it on in underneath there. And again, we'll bring this down to make sure it's not gonna blow our ears off and. Now what we could have done with these, the other thing to keep in mind is if you don't want the effects on there, we can actually export these as a clean guitar sound. And in fact, in the pack that I'm gonna get, uh, enable you to download at the end, you're gonna get the clean version. So you can reamp it, you can add it to any guitar amp you like, and then you can actually uh, use that in your projects. 
or you can use this version with the amp settings that I've got on there. So this is what I'm gonna go with, and the beauty part is now we can loop these out. So we'll loop them just like we did before. Loop that one, loop that one, and we've got a nice basis here for creating a song. So now I can add in my own drum beat here. So let's go to the beat sequencer, and we don't want an 808, we want a rock drummer. We'll come in here, we'll bring the four on the floor, drums in here. Yeah, that default pattern might actually work. So we can hit record, and it's gonna record along. Okay, not exactly the perfect drums, but yeah, you see what I'm, you see the power of this. We can play around with that. We can loop that one. We can start creating this. And then if you wanna start layering up your other instruments, or maybe you wanna sing a song over the top of this, you can add vocals, you can add other things as well. What you can now do is jump down into the description. There is a link down there where you can download a zip file and it's gonna have the WAV file versions of all of these ready to use. Remember, set up your project 124 BPM, bring in those guitars and you can use them in your projects. And this is just the beginning. My plan is to do a bunch more of these. And now that you know how to do them as well, I hope that you can create your own loops, your own samples, and then share them with others, use them in your projects, have some fun. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.